hello guys welcome to this tutorial video my name is Cell, and in this tutorial i'll be showing you how to use the hsc incident trend analysis tool so as you may be aware whenever incidents occur at the workplace it is very important that we take steps to address those incidents and one of the important steps is to make sure we build a database of all those incidents in order to do a bit of trend analysis to understand why incidents occur where exactly they occur what are the causal factors that are causing those incidents and a lot more so this tool actually does that it helps users to build a database of all their incidents and they're able to generate reports now we have a dashboard which users can use to know the trend of of the incident so you can tell the incident types the injury category the incident cause category the persons involved the incident location types of injury the incident trend and the downtime okay so that is the beauty of the tool you build a database of the incident and then you're able to generate reports including a dashboard that helps you to appreciate everything together so without wasting time i'll take you through the the tool so this is the approved list and this is where users can literally change everything here so this is where you need to review for example you have a list of companies so if you are monitoring if you're monitoring multiple companies they definitely want to populate all of them here if it's just one company it's going to be your company name now in our templates we, all, we usually have approved list because we believe that most of the key terminologies that are going to be used depends on companies own management system so this is always where you have the chance to review and make sure that they are up to date or they are according to your management system so in terms of types of incident we have first aid case medical treatment case restricted work case you could add on you could change them in terms of body parts we've literally done everything for you you can however delete and add yours the types of injury we've already done it for you the types of employees whether your own workers agency workers contractors green hands visitors interns the causal factors so this is actually already done for you now the approved list is very important because they populate you select them from a drop down on the source data so over here on the company cell you notice we have the names of the companies on the approved list showing over here as a drop down now the reason why we use approved list or the reason why we populate them in the form of a drop down is to prevent you from making mistakes whilst typing the name so people usually make mistakes by providing an additional full stop or a space and excel will recognize them as separate items which is not good for analysis now uh, you provide the date of the incident you generate a case id you have to provide a case id the name of the incident or what the incident is really about something very short and you can provide details over here and then we have the incident types and that is also coming from the drop down now the drop down is coming from the approved list so if you want to make sure um, if you want a new entry you need to do it from the approved list all right so we've provided three columns for incident types given the fact that potentially there could be incidents with more than two color classifications so it could be a near miss and a drop object it could be a property damage which included an lti and it was a dropped object so potentially it can be three classifications so we provided adequate space for you to do that but oftentimes you may simply just provide for the first incident type now we have the injury category right here that automatically shows in red every time you have a, a, a an injury or an incident that impacts on person so if we choose property damage it's gonna actually show black which means we don't have to update anything here but then assuming it was faced in of course it's gonna show as red implying we need to update something here yeah um we have the downtime from incident whenever an incident happens you usually encounter downtime so you can 
input the downtime that you've recorded from the incidents, related activity, related equipment, location, underlining cost. And this is coming from a drop down from the approved list. Types of person involved is coming from a drop down from the approved list. And then the sex of the person also coming from the drop down. Now, what's the status of investigation for the incident? If it's under investigation, you simply provide by listing it from the drop down. And has investigation been closed? They indicate as closed. So, this is actually the source data sheet. You build database for a long time based on qualitative database, which is very, very important in reporting or measuring performance. It's not always about quantitative data, but it's equally about qualitative data. Okay, so you can actually build a database for up to 3,000 rows, almost 3,000 rows, which means it will take you forever to actually populate or, or exhaust the entire rows. Now, that is the beauty of our tools. Our tools are, are designed for continuous database, not just based on random figures that you provide that do not make sense, but it's based on qualitative data that are relevant. It helps you to be able to even analyze or understand the incident that happened at the workplace because as you are building the database, you will be reviewing them to make sure that you understand the incident so they'll be on your fingertips. Every time there is any opportunity for learning from incidents, you can actually go back to trace an incident that happened in the past which you want to quickly highlight on they say doing a toolbox talk for people to know that this incident has happened before and we don't want it to happen again and that is the reason why we need to implement a given corrective action or an important safety control now after you're done populating your database the next thing you need to do is just come to the, the data tab on the, on, the, on the menu and click on refresh all so um, that will automatically populate all these reports it will populate this automatically it's going to populate this automatically now this and this are almost the same so it, it's all up to you you can simply hide this one if you're not interested i was confused between which one is, is actually nicer i think this one actually is nicer than this so i may probably want to hide this you can do that if you want we have the incident trend right here populating automatically you can simply send as reports if you want to your top management. You could do your own dashboard if you don't want to use um, this dashboard. You can actually do your own dashboard using the, all these graphs. Okay, so we have the downtime. The downtime when you record and uh, when an incident occurs, there's lost productive time. So you can actually build a database of that and it's going to generate all these reports. We have the injury category. You can tell hands and finger injuries is the most that's that are occurring. You can also talk about the types of injuries, cut wounds, bruises, open bone fracture. You can see from the graph, all generating automatically. Incident cause category, behavioral factors, that's the one dominating. You can tell the persons involved, a lot of green hands, people who are new to the job. So they are the ones actually at higher risk of injury and you can see we are recording a lot of them. Um, incident location, you can tell where exactly we are recording the most incident on the drill floor. Accommodation, which is quite interesting, pipe deck. You can also talk about the companies that are involved. Assuming you are building a database of companies as well, it's going to show all here. So for now, Shexel is the one leading with more, most incidents. And then we have the subcontractors also following. We can also talk about the related activities. So that is it right here. You can see that first aid case is the one recording the most. And there are a lot of activities resulting in first aid cases. Handling of metal shavings, rigging down a piece of equipment and all. Related activities, we can look at the activities that usually result in incidents. Or equipment sorry related equipment so in terms of first you have a clamps and slings my grinding machine latin and a draw pipe drift these are equipment that 
are causing most of the first aid injuries. Now, in terms of investigation type, you can tell at a glance the investigation has been completed. The ones that are currently undergoing investigation are ongoing and not, the ones that have not yet been started. So that is how the template works. You build a database. Now, if I want to really show you why, how plug and play it is, I'll simply delete everything here. Okay, I'll delete the content, the report. And then after we are done, we go to the dashboard because we want to see how that reflects on the dashboard. So we come to the data tab on the menu, we click on refresh all, and you realize everything has vanished. So this is gone, 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 all of these are gone. So that tells you that this is really a plug and play template. So let's bring back our data quickly. Okay, so now that we have our data back, let's go to the dashboard and let's just make sure that it captures us back here. So refresh all now on the dashboard, you can filter by, by the incident type so in terms of fetal accident, we have one. The, the injury category is multiple. The cause category is technological. Person involved is a green hand. It caused 4.2 hours of downtime. Um, the injury was a sprain and strain, and it happened on the draw floor. First aid cases, we have a number of incidents. We have five incidents for first aid case. You can tell over here we have these types of injury categories, the cause categories, the persons involved. We also have lock time injury. We recorded three of them and this, this is the breakdown. Okay. The same for medical treatment case and we can actually select all of them. We can also filter by companies like Shexel and contractors. Okay. So that's the beauty of it. Now we can also visualize from the timeline to see incident has happened um, in Q from Q1 to Q2. So that's right here. We could go all the way to the end of the year. And assuming you had a lot of database going beyond 2021, they have 2022, 2023, 2024, and you need to select the time frame to have all the reports showing within a given time frame. So that is how exciting this tool is. Now, another feature that we have is the timeline. Now, the timeline is just for you to visualize um, or share the timeline with employees for them to up visualize how they are performing or be able to drive a particular campaign that this quarter we don't want to record any incident or these are the incidents recorded in Q1 which is very, very overwhelming, but we need to make sure we reduce it further. We need to make sure we get to a point where in Q3, sorry, Q4, in Q4, there are no incidents at all. So this is something you can use in your safety campaigns. So usually you just print it out and paste it on the notice board. Now to update this, you just come down, look at the type of incident that it is. You can change the color codes if you want. So assuming we recorded an LTI, we just just select this. Uh, we come and paste it anywhere. We expand it. And then we just find a suitable location wherever, whichever month is the incident occurred, we put it there. And then we edit the content. You can change the color of the text to black. So this is actually a manual manual entry. This is the only part of the, of the workbook that you do manually. 
apart from that everything is automated apart from just making sure that the approved list is according to your management system and then also making sure that you are recording the right um, accurate data in the source data everything should be sorted out for you so every single report within the workbook will update automatically so if this is something that you are interested or you are interested in okay just hit me up at Shexel we provide support to safety professionals that is what we do so far we've done a lot of customization for, for a lot of colleagues I call them colleagues because we build relationship with them myself I'm a safety professional and this is something that I love to do so I provide support to a lot of safety professionals so if it's something that you would like and you even want to customize further I'll always support you in that regard so just hit me up and then we'll get right into it so thank you very much for watching have a great day